Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be showing you how to set up a media server with MB. This is one of the best media server management um, services out there. Now, what exactly is something like MB if you're new to it or maybe you've heard about it? Basically, it's just kind of like Plex or if, if you've heard of that, um, but it's just by a different uh, kind of team and maker. Um, you might have heard of something called Jellyfin, which is actually an offshoot of MB. MB decided to go closed source um, and Gem, uh, Jelly Bean, Je Jelly, what's it called again? Jellyfin decided to kind of go on its own direction and MB and Jellyfin nowadays feel very different from one another. MB and Plex are pretty similar though, but I got to say, I actually do like MB more than Plex. Um, I find it's a little bit more intuitive to set up. It's not as like confusing with like different users and different accounts and stuff like that, which we'll find with Plex. I already made a video on Plex though, so go check that out if you're interested in that. But guys, if you're downloading content online, downloading torrents and so on, you are going to need a good VPN. I've made several videos on my channel about VPNs. And in fact, I'm kind of known as like the VPN guy here on YouTube. I've reviewed almost every single VPN out there with numerous videos over a span of like eight years. And I've rated the best VPNs on a tier list on vpntierlist.com. In this video, I'm going to be recommending NordVPN and I'll put a link for it in the description down below. If you use that link, you'll be able to get four extra free months as well as a discount. Why do I recommend NordVPN specifically? Well, despite the fact you've probably heard of it before because it's so big, it actually is a very good VPN nowadays. Not just from like me being an affiliate for them, because I'm actually an affiliate for other VPNs too. But just objectively, if you check out my data table here, you can see exactly why. Very good speeds, plenty of servers, and that's really what you want to see from a VPN when it comes to torrenting. Additionally, you could even get SOX5 proxy support, which you can see here that I've labeled it as it does have. Um, so that's definitely something very solid. Overall, NordVPN is going to be like the fastest. And another cool thing about it is that it does have um, kind of like remote VPN capability. Um, so that is pretty cool. So let's say you're not home. You can actually connect to NordVPN through your computer on your phone or any other device where you can install NordVPN and you can actually watch your media server remotely in a different house or even a hotel. So that's pretty cool. And I'll discuss how to do that later on in this video as well. So that is the reason I recommend Nord. So not just because it's a big VPN, but specifically for my use cases and the torrenting use cases and media server management, it's the VPN to use. So click on my link in the description down below. But if you don't want to use Nord, check out Surfshark maybe, or just don't pay attention to me and use whatever the fuck VPN you want, because at the end of the day, there you go. It's up to you. But why do I recommend MB? Well, MB is very good. It's very intuitive. It's very polished. Um, I used to use Jellyfin because everyone online in the privacy community says, oh, Je Jellyfin's open source. It's so much better. It's free to use. It doesn't have any annoying paid apps. But I found with MB that the application support on Shield and iOS as well was just way, way better. Um, you're able to kind of install the app better than something like Jellyfin, um, which might have some like third-party apps or I might have an app nowadays, I don't really know. But at least when I started using MB, Jellyfin wasn't supported as well. And MB just works way better. I, I, I don't know how else to explain it besides it just works. And that's what you want to see from an application. Um, so yeah, that is why I use MB. Um, but now you might be wondering, well, you know, MB sounds good. I like the sound of it. So how do you get started? Well, you're going to need two things. Basically, the MB server is what runs on your computer to kind of... Um, hold or kind of display your media to other devices that connect to your server. And then on those other devices, you're going to need an MB application. So let's say you're using the video shield like I am. Uh, just download MB from the Google Play Store on your shield or on iOS. Um, Apple TV, I think, also supports it. Or even on a Fire Stick or various other devices, you can install that application. Or if you're connecting from a computer to another media server, you can also download MB on your computer. But like I said, the first thing you're going to need to do is set up your computer to be an MB server. And we're going to be just showing you how to do that in this video. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to mb.media slash download.html and pick which um, operating system you're on. So the cool thing is, is you can actually run it on various things, various different kind of operating systems, whether that be a true media server device like a Synology or TrueNash, or you can even, I guess you can even make a media server on Android or something like that on NVIDIA Shield, which is pretty cool. I didn't really think to do that. My computer just runs it because it has a lot of storage and it's easy to kind of download things and so forth and manage the media. So I just use Windows and we're probably going to be using Windows for this tutorial just because it's probably the most common option out there, I would say. So once you do that, you're just going to download the MB server. And then once it's downloaded and installed, 
Um, it's probably going to open up, but if not, you just go to this address right here, click copy. So localhost um, 8096. So guys, once you download and install the app and go to the address as mentioned, it looks something like this. This is my MB server right here. And you can see you can just log in. You might have to make some kind of password and credentials. So make sure to jot that down or save it in your password manager. So once you have NB installed, there is one thing you do want to do though. And this is always what I recommend people to do. Like chat GPT says here, I just kind of asked it to just display the directions very easily for the video. Um, but basically you're going to want to go to your network settings on your computer and make sure that there's like a firewall exception for a specific port. And let's go ahead and show you kind of how to do that. So basically what you're going to want to do is go to your firewall settings. You could just um, go like this and go firewall and then go here. Um, and you're going to want to um, make a um, uh, pretty much an exception for MB. And as you can see, like I have right here. Um, so you just want to make exceptions for it. Um, I don't think it needs to be going um, outbound um, because you're not like opening it to the internet or anything like that. As you can see, I don't really have it right here. Um, it's really just inbound. So you want to make exceptions. Um, let me show you mine right here. Um, as you can see, the, um, the ports will be, I just kind of opened up the ports for MB. Um, let's see if I did any specific ports. Um, I just made an exception for it to like on my inbound local network to just kind of allow all ports. Um, so that makes it so if I'm on another device, I can actually see the other computer. Um, another thing you want to do is you want to go to your network settings. And with this one, you want to go to your, your network thing. For me, it's going to be like ethernet, but depending on what you're using. Another thing you're going to want to do is make sure you're on a private network. That means your device is discoverable on the network. So if you want to um, be accessible on other devices, like, you know, other devices connect your MB server, you're going to want to select this option right here um, in the network and internet section of your adapter. For me, it's ethernet. So it says here, your device is discoverable on the network. Select this if you need file sharing, use apps to communicate over this network. So there you go. Um, so this is, uh, you just want to kind of make sure that both of those things are available or you might not be able to see MB and connect to it from your other device. Next up, we're going to show you how to kind of set up MB and it's very simple. Basically, you just need to have a folder with your media in it. And then once you get to um, your thing, you're going to log in, like I said. So here's my password right here. And uh, this is what it looks like on my server. I might blur some things out here just because I don't want to get trouble for having uh, Linux ISOs, as they like to say. Um, but basically, as you can see here, um, I have my media that I've been watching. I have some uh, various content down there. Um, but basically what you want to do is you just want to make sure that it's kind of finding your files. So you click on that cogwheel and it's going to take you to kind of like more settings. They'll have like the remote access availability and stuff like this. Um, so um, we're going to basically go to um, the library down here. And this is where you're going to make your content. So pretty much you're just going to add the library like this and go ahead and find the folder on your computer. Uh, one thing you can do is like, for example, let's say if this is the address for your, your server or your um, your files, like your media files. Um, I, I would suggest making something like movies and then put movies in there. Um, you can actually just copy addresses text and then just paste it here and I'll find the folder. Once it does that, it's gonna add the folder and um, you just wanna scan the library files. And yeah, that, that you're already kind of pretty um, pretty good there. But basically you'll download MB on your other device and log in and you should be able to see your computer popping up since you open up those ports um and maybe so you can see your network and you'll connect to the server and then you'll just be able to stream content directly from your computer and that's pretty much as simple as that let me know if this helped you guys down in the comments down below i tried to cover everything i don't want to make this like a 30 minute full full you know going over every little setting because for most people that's kind of this really all you really need to get started so guys remember how i was talking about nor vpn why it's a good choice well i do believe it's one reason is outside of the speed and so on is because of the mesh net feature that comes built in natively. All you do is just click on this little thing, turn on mesh net, and then you're going to want to put it on the other device that you want to connect to your computer. So let's say you're at a friend's house and you want to watch your media server or you're traveling and you have it on that laptop. You're just going to want NordVPN on your host computer where the media server is running and NordVPN on that other device to access your host um, server. And then you'll just push, uh, you'll just put NordVPN on both devices, turn mesh net on each one, and then it'll kind of create a tunnel uh, just like you see here. And then you'll be able to access your files remotely. There's also a lot of other tutorials too uh, that NordVPN does have. You might want to check those out. I'll show you here. As you can see here, they have lots of documentation. Um, so you can even see various examples of how to do it. 
Um, so you can um, do it with uh, Jellyfin and Plex, which is pretty much exactly the same. So yeah, they have plenty of tutorials on their website showing you kind of how to do this. And like I said, it's it's pretty simple. You just uh, It just shows you how to connect to the media server, pretty much what I showed you how to do with MB. Um, and then the part with Nord Mesh is just um, um, pretty much uh, here, right here. Um, so you just connect to um, the host server, as you can see right here. Um, so yeah, check out these guides if you're interested in that remote method more. Um, so um, if you wanna do that, to access the server remotely with NordVPN. Basically the idea or technique I would use is you go to um, basically Nord Mesh kind of creates like an address and on your remote device, you just put that address in and then you use that port and that's kind of how you could do it. Um, but there's also uh, guides on this to go into it more um, just to show you it. I don't have it set up on my computer right now and that's because I don't really remote access too much and it's kind of a, you know, putting it on my device and doing this and that and messing up with my server. So um, yeah, if you guys want more information on this, uh, it's pretty much the same technique. Um, basically just going to the address that, that connects the, uh, the um, stuff and then you will be able to uh, connect remotely. Um, and there you can kind of play around with things. But let me know down in the comments down below if this helped you at all. Let me know if you'd like to see me make another one of these videos on something else. And I'll see you again very soon.